What is going on, guys? We are at Joshua Tree. We did a little sunrise uh, get up just to film some content. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about the things that I did to basically make my first 10K online. Just the steps that I took the, um, when I was, I think it was 17, uh, when I first made my. Uh, 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 17 when I first. When, uh, 17 when I made my first 10K online. So we're going to go into the office when we get back here from Joshua Tree and um, walk you guys through that, alright? Let's do it. I'm kind of just breaking down the story, what actually happened, and the reasons why I think it happened. Because, you know, the, the the actual process, the the money going into my bank account, the process of that happening, the 10K, uh, was about four days. But I'm gonna kind of just break down the story because I, you know, I was I, I was out of high school. It was my first year in college. I didn't want to stay in college. I just wanted to like make money. Oh, wait, what? My friends are at Panda Express and they want to know what I want to get. So, uh, orange, chicken. With unsweetened iced tea. So, a little bit of a backstory, guys. How did this all start, right? Well, like just growing up, middle school, high school, I always wanted to just like, kind of like find. Like I was, I was just a really curious kid. Um, I get in trouble a lot, like doing doing a lot of stupid things. But uh, one of the biggest takeaways, looking back, right, is I was always curious about stuff. You know, like how does this work, or like how did this person do this, or like how how does this happen and because of that like i was always curious and then you know when i found out that you could like make money without necessarily having a job that really spiked my curiosity i was just like how are people doing that like how is that possible and then what really pushed me over the edge right is when i was in middle school i think it was like seventh grade and my father actually came home uh he used to work at microsoft and then like he came home like crying one day um saying that he got like laid off and this was i think in like when the recession hit like 08 09 or something around there um, but yeah so then that was uh that that that's that memory itself was just kind of just burned into my school um just seeing you know my dad or like a family member you know someone you really care about um really down um because of like external factors that they couldn't really control and so i was just like i mean from that point on i like looking back that was a turning point where i was like i, I don't want to get a job i'm scared i don't want that to happen to me um and so I was just like, you know, my curiosity just kind of took me all over the place. I tried to become a gaming YouTuber, which actually surprisingly, I didn't do too bad. I was getting views. I was getting videos with over 100,000 views. A lot of it was around Skyrim and those kind of games. But some people at, at some people at school in high school, this was like 10th grade or something, kind of found out. And then it was like a joke around the school. So I just stopped doing it, um, which looking back was a stupid decision in itself, just because like one, you shouldn't care what other people think when you're when you're on your own, you know, when you're on your own hustle. Uh, doing your own thing right um, that shouldn't matter but you know that got to my head so I just stopped doing it completely and I was like wow you know like people make fun of me just like for making uh, videos about you know video games and stuff so I stopped doing that and then from there let's see I was looking at just more business stuff like I bought books on like how to become a hedge fund manager like 101 like for dummies I, I had a bunch of those books I was just reading and just curious and like literally just trying to find ways to make money or trying to find ways like like I was just this this kid that thought I was like this crazy genius destined to like make a make a bunch of money um, and I was like it was delusional to a point where I was like okay I'm gonna make a bunch of money I just don't know how yet and so you know I, I went through those books then I just realized like I didn't want to do that and then let us stumble upon like the world of e-commerce right but not in you know I, this was nowhere near before the, like getting approaching the first 10k I made I tried to make like a solar phone case right and this is when I got thrown into a world of branding that I had no idea about yet okay I tried to make a solar phone case um, I was talking with suppliers on Alibaba that was my very first time you know figuring out what Alibaba was um, in high school but like they were like you know we need ten thousand dollars for these molds which are like what you use to actually like make the design of the phone case just because there was like solar panels involved and electrical components involved um, on top of just the mold fee it got ridiculously expensive it was like nine ten thousand um, dollars but at the time I was like oh this is what business is like I need to find investors I need to go out and the thing is I actually did find an investor because I was scrappy I was a scrappy little kid and I was going around um, I had a business partner at the time he wouldn't he wanted to get involved as well so I was just like oh, okay I need someone to go 50 50 with but thinking back now too like just to get like for for you guys like watching and stuff um, you don't always need a business partner in fact I would almost discourage it um, I would discourage an equal uh, like a 50 50 business partnership because guarantee you it's not really 50 50 but i was 50 50 with this partner at the time and we did find an investor and he was actually willing to give us 100k for 51 percent of the company right which is crazy like i was what like 16 17 whatever in in high school and this old guy was like yeah i'll give you 100k for 51 percent but the thing is it was 51 percent so he wanted to own the company basically and we were just kind of go around doing uh, our thing for him and 
for some, like it didn't fit the vision that I wanted or that I had to actually imagined for myself, which could have been like me just being stubborn, me being stupid, whatever the case may be. But on top of that, like I didn't like the fact that the product wasn't that good. We had some samples coming in. Um, the fact that like, yeah, we had a solar charging phone case, but it wasn't that good. Like it was a small solar panel. Like, the, the tech wasn't there where it was like a viable option where you know you could you would rather have a solar phone case versus like a just a rechargeable battery pack right so there was that problem right so eventually I like that didn't go well um, things didn't end well with my partner either there that's also one reason why I discouraged 50 50 partnerships um, but after that right because um, I was already in that little branding phase I was like okay I want to do like something a lot simpler then I created a company called new planet with a K I don't know why I just thought it sounded cool and that was actually a bracelet company um, if you guys were ever like saw like anchor bracelets on Instagram that were super popular way back a few years ago I was part of that in that you know while it was hot and we did a like we we did some sales right but again this was like pure branding so I ordered literally custom leather straps uh, me and my friend we tied them or like together in our in our rooms um, and we had these custom anchors that we met. Uh, I met with a supplier here in California, actually, time. And um, they, now, like now that I know this too, like the, the California manufacturer was actually just outsourcing their, their molding work to suppliers in China. So like I thought I was being, you know, supporting US jobs and, and doing all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, they, they're just outsourcing. So I was like, okay, they're, they're middlemanning it. I was just gonna go straight to the supplier. So eventually I did that. Um, but again, we were just selling little leather bracelets and we did like, like a thousand dollars in sales guys but i had so much inventory left it's still at my parents house my parents just want to hang on to it they like the memories but yeah there was a lot of material there that i still have and i might give them away or something someday but there's those and then um that kind of flopped just because I, I had no idea how to market right we were using like influencers and trying that i had no idea how to do paid ads i was still very young um and nothing was really like picking up big time um over there so i was like okay you know whatever um i'll find something else right so again i had failed multiple different ventures, whether it was my own fault or my own negligence or my own stubbornness, whatever the case may be, I, I hadn't had success with those ventures, right? And that, that was like over the process of like a year or two. And then after I graduated um, high school, right? I was the youngest kid in my grade. So high school, everyone was older than me. I was always super young. Like when I played academy soccer, um, club soccer, I was always on the age group younger. So all my friends were actually like, most of my friends were juniors when I was a senior in high school. Um, it was really weird. Then after that, right, so we went to college. I didn't really want to go to college, but I knew like, okay, I had to make something happen if I want to get out. There's no way my parents are going to let me drop out. There's no way none of this is going to happen if I can't make some money, right? Um, so I was like, okay, what can I do? I was already kind of into that branding e-commerce world, right? I didn't really think about it too much, but then on Instagram, I saw this guy that I followed. He owned a bunch of Instagram pages, right? But I actually added him on Snapchat just because I, th I thought he was cool. Um, and he posted on his Snapchat story that he was making a website. And I was like, at first I didn't think about it at all. I uh, didn't really pay attention to it. But then the next day, okay, he actually posted that he made $5,000 in one day. And then that's when I was like, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait a second. Hold up, hold up. I, I, I saw that. I went back to his old story because Snapchat, you know, that, 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 that shit lasts like 24 hours on a post. I went back to the story, saw his URL, went to his URL. Then I went to his website and I inspected the code. I found Shopify, found all this other stuff. And I found like Oberlo. I found like like everything that he was using basically, right? I, I, I was scrappy and curious, right? That I think are the two biggest factors to my success so far. But both of those things. Um, led me to basically recreating a site very similar to his, okay? Because again, he just had a very general store um, on Shopify selling products to his Instagram and like followers, right? With all his pages, because he owned a bunch of pages. So he had a huge network there to make a lot of money. Now, I made a store, but I, I was already kind of into fashion. I always enjoyed fashion. So I did like fashion accessories, okay? And then from there, I had a site done, but I had no money. I was a broke college kid, right? So I had like $50 in my bank account um, that my parents had given me for like food for the for the whole month i don't know um but so <laughs> for the whole month damn. um yeah that was crazy okay so yeah so i had the website i had no money to spend on anything and i was like okay well what do i do now right um, so again i was i got scrappy i literally emailed okay I, f I found a list of like 60 influencers on instagram um that own pages and you know did you know like theme pages right these weren't people uh, theme pages because um, this was back when Instagram was chronological, their post chronological theme pages had a lot stronger uh, sort of ROI at that time. But I emailed 60 of them and I was like, hey, I'm willing to give you a percent of my store if you're just down to just push shout outs daily. And we can both like cash out basically, as I was saying, like I'll manage everything, I'll do everything. You just post a few times a day and you get a percent of the store, right? Yeah, literally everyone said no um, or they didn't respond except for one guy. Okay, out of 60, 65 emails, everyone said no except one dude, one guy, and he was from Russia. Um, and I'll never forget this because he was like, 
kind of on the fence. He, like, he, he basically said no, but then I was like, I think it was the email, whatever it was. I think he wanted like percent of profit. Um, he was like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, I'm not too, you know, into this or like, I don't, I don't really understand it all. And I was like, okay, I'll give you percent of revenue, right? So looking back, like, never do percent of revenue because that hurts your margins a lot. But it is what got me my start, right? So we agreed on a percentage of revenue, and then I, I, I spent the next, you know, three, four days after he said yes, we ha we signed a little contract agreement thing that just said like, you get this amount of amount of stuff as long as you post this amount of times a day. So I actually got him to post two to three times a day minimum. Okay, I said you can post more if you want if it's doing really well, because um, then we both make more money, right? So I just had a minimum amount of that he was supposed to post, and he had about, I wanna say four or five million followers across all his pages, um, with like one page having the most at like two million-ish and everything else was just a little bit less, but somewhere around there. So I spent the next few days making that website, again, fashion accessories, I was selling hats, bracelets, rings, um, shades, some backpacks, um, literally just accessories, okay? And primarily geared for men. This I wasn't selling to girls because like, I was into fashion, so I was like, okay, I'm my own target market, I'm my own demographic, what would I buy? And that's what I sold, right? Yeah, so I spent the next three, four days trying to figure out like what I wanted to do and um, like perfecting the website, right? I was a perfectionist, I was a kid with ADD, and so I was like, okay, this has to be perfect, I'm trying to like, figure everything out. Um, and so then, once I did that, right, I gave him the little pictures that I made on Photoshop, where I was like, okay, these are the images you're gonna use to shout out um, the store. Everything is good to go. I double checked everything like five times because I was so nervous. I was like, okay, you know, cross my fingers, hope this works. And then, th th get this, I this was after my first year of college and I was back home on break uh, from school. So I was at my parents' house and everything. Um, then I woke up in the morning. Okay, this is the, this is the juice. So I woke up the next morning. It was like nine in the morning. Um, I'm all groggy and I, I turn over in bed, look at my phone and I literally like piss my pants because the very first day, okay, he had only posted two shout outs, but we made $2,200, okay? Um, as a kid in college, as like having done very little, again, like I, I, I spent like weeks on my website making sure it looked perfect um, and branded, right? So again, that, that's, that's the one thing that I stressed right from the beginning was branding. Um, but we did like $2,200 our very first day. And then every consecutive day, that whole entire week was about a $2,000 day. I wanna say, for a few days there was, you know, a thousand or something, but every single day after that was like a, at least a thousand dollars, okay? So like the first 10K I made was in the span of that, that little time period of him just posting posting. So we did that, we ran that up for a few months. And um, that's really how I got my start. But again, it was Instagram influencers. I was so uh, inexperienced with paid ads that Literally, like I, I had Facebook ads launched and it was just $10 I was spending. Um, looking back, like I'm pretty sure they were profitable, but I had no idea what I was doing. So I never increased it, never did nothing. Uh, I just left it there at $10. So like I, I felt good as a kid, like, oh yeah, I'm running paid ads <laughs> at $10 a day. So that that's really the story, guys, of just what kind of happened and how I made my first $10,000. Um, again, it was with Instagram influencers back when it was chronological. I was using theme pages to drive traffic to my store. And my store, you know, the entire brand, it was called The Nugget. I've, I've mentioned this before in some other videos guys the Instagram is also still up and you can all like feel free to check it out if you ever want to figure out how we you know branded the Instagram yeah it was really called that and then the entire brand was like we weren't saying these were our products nothing because I knew um, you know there's like suppliers sending them from China they might have their other words on it whatever so I just said that we we're curating um, some of the coolest fashion accessories online right so that's what I said and they, it worked people people really you know they, they vibed with it and that's really what we did right again I couldn't scale that store though because I was stuck uh, giving a percent of my of my profits I think it was like 15 percent 15 or 18 percent um, to the influencer or revenue sorry not even a profits um, to him and then we just kept doing that until the kind of the store just slowly sizzled out because it was his own audience right looking back I made a lot of mistakes so first of all I didn't branch out I didn't use the profit to branch out to other Instagram influencers just for some like God, I was so stupid looking back, but um, for some reason I was like, oh yeah, he's just gonna keep pushing them. Like, th like I, I didn't think about like theme page fatigue. Um, same thing as like uh, like ad, you know, ad fatigue when you're running paid ads and stuff. But like eventually, at a certain point, everyone on on the Instagram page, um, or anyone that's active, right? They'll have seen the ad and purchased. They'll have seen the ad and done nothing. Um, they they've already reached a decision in their mind for the most part whether or not they're going to buy um, from that brand or product, uh, whatever the case may be, right? But I kept running them, so eventually it died out. But I never like was smart enough at that point to like hey I need to run you know shout outs on these all like all these other pages start these paid ads um, start branding stuff um, I did try and brand it a little bit down the road but it was too late and I, I'm, I'm I did some weird things on that but another big thing guys that I did really well with the store was I was reaching out to actual real low-key brands on Instagram like they were branded brands on Instagram right not dropshipping or anything like that but like real brands on Instagram that were just small and I just said hey can I list your product on my store um, and you know you'll get like 
Like I, I only take like a 10, 15% cut and I just want to list on your store. And most of them said yes right away because it's, it's more than a wholesale price for them. Um, and it's basically just like them getting the order. So um, why, why I did that in my head, uh, this is one thing I did really well was because I wanted the store to feel branded, right? So I wanted people to see products that they have never seen before. So like I found like cool fashion brands in Norway that made some really sick backpacks, like spray paints and stuff. It was all custom that they sold for like 400 bucks. I listed them on my store, but most like no one, I don't think a single person bought this site, but it, it added like uniqueness to the brand. Like people saw this and were like, I haven't seen this before. This is cool. It kept them on the site. They looked around, they found all the other cheap stuff that we were selling. They usually bought those things. Okay. Um, yeah. Not a single person bought one of those expensive ass backpacks, but um, like we worked with some sunglass brands that had their own custom sunglasses. I think their name was like Swole Panda. Yeah. Shout out to those guys. Shout, shout out Oliver. Um, Damn, if you're watching this, bro, it's been a lot. It's been, it's been a ride. But yeah, so we worked with these other brands to incorporate them onto our site. So it looked like we were, you know, really curating really cool brands from across the globe. And then also just selling our own products, right? Now, our own products made up like 80% of the catalog. Um, the other 20% were, again, just mainly for show. But some people were buying them and were buying the jewelry, which is really, really cool. So um, that's really kind of what what we were doing. And that's what I think I did really well at my first store. And that's really just how I made my first 10K online, guys. So um, I kind of wanted to break that down for you guys. Hopefully you learned some value of just like, you know, one, don't expect success right away. I've been doing this for years um, and it's still hard on a lot of different like things that I'm trying to learn. Two, always try to learn, always be curious and scrappy. That's literally the best advice I can give anyone. Literally just be, be a curious little kid, um, be scrappy, always be like thinking, always ask questions, just keep going at it. Like I think there, it's literally impossible to not see success in e-commerce. The only way you will fail in e-commerce is if you quit. That's what I think also is extremely true. Anyone that's been doing e-commerce, ooh, I got a little, little bug over here. I, I don't know a single person that's been doing e-commerce for over three years that isn't successful. Okay, I don't know a single person that's been trying to do e-commerce for three consecutive years. Okay, three years of grinding and figuring things out that hasn't made a lot of money in e-commerce, okay? I know people that have tried e-commerce for a few months and quit. I know people that have tried e-commerce for, you know, say a year and they quit. But that's, that's the thing. I don't know anyone that's been doing this for years and hasn't seen results or doesn't know what they're doing in the space or doesn't know how, how to launch a, a brand or dropshipping store fast and successfully. Okay. So again, that, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, kind of want to just do a breakdown of literally what happened, how, you know, I made my first 10K, the story behind it and sort of what went on with that. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like. If you have questions about anything, leave it in the comments below. I'll get back to you and uh, make sure to subscribe, guys, if you guys like the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, take care. Peace.